Hello. Hello. Hello, are. hello, hello. Here we are. <laughs> Hi there. In conversation. Uh, my name's Aubrey <laughs> Parsons, and I'm here with Mr. Wes Markin, the genius author mm. that is Wes Markin. And uh, we're oh, here to answer a couple of questions Please. for you. How are you, Wes? <clears throat> I'm good. I'm good. Uh, not as good as you, because you're sitting next to a villa in uh, France. Um, I, I am at my house in France. Um, the sun is room. shining. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I have no, wine. Okay. So yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> it makes a di it, like you said. It makes a difference for me being stuck in the tiny little room that I normally stuck in. So. Yeah. yeah. Like All, the room life is good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I don't blame you. Um, I mean, it's very hot. It's very hot here, as it is probably everywhere in the UK um, at the moment. So I'm yeah. sitting here in, in, in this room trying to trying to write the, the fourth book, actually, trying to write the fourth Gardener book. But it's Are you actually it. writing at the moment, then, as we speak? Well, I was, no, because just before this, I was feeding my children, which is uh, far more challenging than writing a book. Um but yeah. so basically, this book itself, though, yeah, it's in its, it's, in its infancy, so so we're, we're, we can't talk about that one just yet. But obviously, there's this new one coming out, isn't there? That you've that you've been uh, putting your wonderful voice onto. Or yeah. Audience. So so I'm I'm halfway through. I've I've had to suspend recording because I've had to come to France. Uh, just for a had to of do days that. Just to... <laughs> Someone I just forced needed you. to rest. <laughs> yeah, I know. I had to. I had to rest my head and rest my voice. But I. I am halfway through, the crying cave killings. Um, and, and, and just for the record, joyous, he, mate. he didn't. He didn't stop because he was bored. <laughs> He's actually read <laughs> no, the whole book not. already. He's read the book already, so he knows how it ends. No. I, 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 and interestingly, <laughs> we, we're we're going to find out about sort of my methods in the way that I record things and and how exciting it is for me as it is for any any listener or reader of a book so so this month we're celebrating all things audio it's audio book month and um we've been set a couple of questions by our friends at boldwood uh, to to answer for you lovely listener out there and the uh, the first question that we've had, which I'm I'm going to put to Wes first, okay. is um, what do you love about audiobooks? Where's Mark? Right. Well, the best the thing I love most about audiobooks is 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 my uh, long car journeys um, that I I sometimes have to do um, for one of the, for things that I do in my other my other life is I've got a, a, a another job um in schools and that takes me traveling very far afield to places like doncaster and and, and um Hull and places like that to do a little bit of work with uh, with schools um so on those journeys it, it, there's no better time to um play an audiobook um and not my own obviously because uh, i've heard them already so i choose to um listen to other crime authors and um and and other authors um through audio so what and what i love most about them is the fact that yes i can i can listen to them while i'm driving but uh, you know and and get immersed in that world well obviously still focusing on the on the traffic ahead of me um but it's almost like it's a bit like um it's a bit like the the tv i guess like you, you can really relax as you're reading an audio book because it, it's kind of unfolding for you you don't have to you, you kind of maybe um wear your eyes out get your eyes tired kind of thing and it kind of unfolds for you and and, and you kind of get that acting and that kind of um world creation that you get on 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 the box but you still get to use your imagination as well because obviously you're still having to uh, visualize everything yourself so yeah it's it's for me it's the best of both worlds i think yeah and yourself yeah. like you um car journeys especially um on my way over to to France today, um, because I, I drove over today um, with with my daughters, and um, whilst whilst they were sleeping, uh, I was listening to to audiobooks on the way, and it's something that I've done for years. When I was a youngster, I used to buy them on cassette. Um, okay. Sorry, aeroplane flying overhead here. Uh, used to buy them on on cassette, and obviously an audiobook 
about 12 cassettes for, a, for a, an unabridged version. Um, and it, it's just a way of letting your mind wander. And you're right about you, when you when you listen to a story being told, you picture the images in your head. Um, and I love, I find them very relaxing. I listen to audiobooks as well to go to sleep. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this do the same thing where you'll stick a, a, a book on at bedtime and you fall asleep within five minutes and the next day you're having to rewind and re-listen. But that's, that's the beauty of audio books. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I'm the same with reading. Quite often I'll read at night and then the next morning I'll have to go back and reread because... Yeah, yeah. And of course the great thing with an audio book is you can, you can be doing other things. So you can be decorating or working or digging the garden or driving the car or whatever yeah. you can do them anywhere so and what and what did you, you listen to about. on the way here then on the way to france what did you listen to well that's i think that's kind of going to be answered by i know one of the next questions that's coming up no, so I'll, I'll answer that one in a minute because okay. um it's I've, i'm actually as a result of of, of this uh, little, little project and this interview um, I've dug out the first audiobook that I ever listened to, and that's what I was listening to. But I'll talk about that in a minute because it's um, it's that particular book has impacted on what I do now with um, my voiceover work. So the next question in the list is how did I um, become a voiceover artist or an audiobook narrator? Uh, I was a professional singer for 30, 35 years. And a good, uh, I still and a good do one. A bit now. And a good one. Uh, well, thank you very much. I've seen the, I've <laughs> seen the footage on YouTube. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, Mind blowing. I, I made it. I made a. I, I scratched a living at it for a long time. I, I, I was. Um, um, I didn't have formal training. Just learnt by going out there and performing badly at first. But like anything, if you put your 10,000 hours in, folks, you eventually get better. But COVID came um, and I was no longer able to perform. And I had thought about changing my career. So I already had a little studio at home where I used to record all my audio demos. Um, and I loved audio books. So I thought, well, I can do that. And I started recording audio books and found that it's to get it sounding really good it's not as easy as you think it is um and i basically kind of landed on my feet in that i started working with some great authors wes being one of them right in the i mean i i've done fifth how many of your books have i done wes quite a few wow so so we've got the we've got seven york ones and the eighth one is coming uh five yeah. Jake Petman ones, so that put us on right. 13. And then you've got three from Bull. So are we looking at about six, 16, 15, 16? <laughs> like so, yeah. so here we are. And that was four years so you ago. You've got job security. <laughs> That's a... Well, yeah. Um, if I carry on. <laughs> it's been an interesting run. Um, and I and I hope, you know, long, long may it continue. Um, it's great fun. It's a, yeah, I love doing the job, especially when you know when I get to work with authors like Wes, um, mm. who I have to say is a particularly good writer um, and very easy to narrate. Some books aren't easy to narrate because mm. they're written to be read. But Wes kind of caught on quite early in that Wes writes for both. He writes to be read, but also to be listened to which is a joy as a, an audiobook narrator. Makes my job a lot easier. Thanks, Wes. Nice no, time. it's okay. You're very welcome. Um, no. Excuse me while I have a sup oh. of French wine here. <clears throat> so, Wes, this is an awkward question for me to ask because you could give the wrong answer for me. Okay. But how special is it to hear your characters brought into life to audio? Well, it's exciting. I mean, you, you know, you can't argue with that. It, I suppose it, 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 people would be asking the same things about if they were made into films or TV programs. 
you know people always say you know how does that feel to to writers and i mean you can't argue you're going to get a slightly different representation of of the um of the character because obviously there's a new artist involved and that's absolutely fine and i mean you know it's testament to the fact that you know we're still working together i guess the the the, the characters that you see the characters in a very similar way to how i see my characters initially and uh, it isn't personality is important as well and it, but and as well the themes so because you get the themes of the um of the novels and you get the themes um so surrounding like for instance there's a lot of the, the the theme of loss is very prevalent in um in the last one that you did the lonely lake killings and obviously the theme of loss has to come out through the characters okay because you know when we're not in it's nice to have some description we have got some description we've got some lovely scenery obviously we've got the you know the yorkshire scenery we've got the nesbitt scenery but but you know we're not we're not writing to use description all the time to bring out themes we need to bring out the themes through the actions of the characters and the voices of the characters and you do that so well and, and you know if i think back to sort of the character of uh Tsai meadows for example in um the last book, The Lonely Lake Killings, and the and the traumatic loss he experienced of, of his own daughter, despite himself being a very morally ambiguous character himself. Um, and then his loss started to outweigh, um, you know, his, his hard, strong veneer. Um, I thought he brought that to life perfectly, and I thought the themes came out of the character very, very well. And and for me, that's the important thing, I think, with the with the audio recording, because it's prob. I would. I imagine it's the same if 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 you see a film or, or a TV program of your work, they're never going to look how you imagine them. They're never going to like probably maybe move how you imagine them to move. But what they need to still hold is is, is the values of the uh, of the themes and the book and the messages from the writer. And I think that you do that fantastically well. I, I you know. I listen to the character and I see my own character in my head. So therefore you must be presenting it, the themes accurately through, through the character in my view. So I hope that answers your question. Mm, yeah, it's interesting. It's, um, I only have the, obviously what's written in the book to, to, to develop a character from. So mm. sometimes I'll, I'll ask for, uh, you know, some, some character, uh, cheat sheets if you like tell me about a little bit of background about the characters but mostly with with your characters i just jump straight in so in a weird way i'm getting inside your head to, <laughs> to be yeah. able to do that and, and we know with some of those books you probably don't want to do that uh maybe not so much with these these are a bit more um, user friendly but i think um what one thing that you do tend to um do very well i think you do do that very well i think you get into the character very very easily uh, Aubrey and and and, uh, and that would partly down to the fact that I think when I when I put everything into the character, I'm making sure that the, the, that that the character is coming out through everything they say and everything that they do. So hopefully, it's apparent to you when you first read it, and you, and you're making your initial notes, and then, and then you see yes, okay, we've got like you know, Simon has got a morally ambiguous character. He's like, you know, he's led a life mm. of uh, you know a corrupt life. But the one thing that he always cherished is is now gone, and, and I think you 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 brought yeah, that out as yeah. well in this book. And yeah, um, yeah, in some of the York books as well, I've got some very some devious criminals. Um, yeah, I mean, there's some there's some um, there's some very difficult subject matter in in the York books um, that um, you know I'm I'm sure as as you know some readers may may have struggled with. I I did as a narrator. But that that then becomes a really interesting challenge for me, because some of the characters are, are really not very nice at all. No, but you've still um, got to vocalise them, and that's hard. The it, I think the the Yorkshire Murders, um, my current series is. is 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 very grounded in the sort of the the, the Yorkshire atmosphere. You sort of the 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 northern. Um, wear and tear of life um and and i think you know i kind of see i kind of see these as like a bbc this is i try to tell people it's like a bbc crime drama 
or one that's at least exploring the north of England th through through crime. Mm -hmm. And whereas the other ones, I think, are a bit more maybe a bit more Lutheresque, you know, if, if, if some readers know about Luther on TV, although it is BBC as well, to be fair, but it's a bit more, I don't know, it's a bit, I wouldn't say, um, I wouldn't say hyper-reality, but it's a bit more sort of risky with some, with some of its subject matter and a bit more um, creative, not creative, but a bit more sort of exploratory with, with things that maybe could happen, pro probably don't happen quite as much um and um i think the yorkshire murders in particular the newer books tap into a, a stronger vein of reality definitely than the than the than the york books but then i think the york books in themselves are, are entertaining quite a number of people i'm glad to say so yeah yeah it's different it's, it's, well, it's, different it's interesting that your roads effectively it, is it interesting? I mean, you you know you're 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 breathing new life into those characters now and bringing some of them back. Um, I was, I was yeah. loved here the fact that a certain Miss May is coming back. That's going to be great fun. Yes, um, it's really good. It's good. <laughs> You've read it, right? It's it's... It. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have a, another question has popped up here magically on the on the screen here. Um, how do I prepare to narrate an audiobook? I get asked this question a lot. And what steps do I undertake? So when I first started working as a as an audiobook narrator, I would um, get a script and I would sit down and methodically read it from start to finish and then go back and work through the script and highlight every character in a different color so I knew who was speaking. Um, and then I'd sit down and work out what each character was going to be like. And if I didn't have a cheat sheet from an author, I'd kind of make up a backstory in my head as to what this person was going to be like. Um, after I'd done about 50 books or so, audio books, that started to become second nature to me in, in that I didn't need to mark, highlight text in different colours. And I found that I could read a book straight um, without actually reading it through first and the joy of that is that i am just as surprised as a reader of a book when things happen so the emotion and the surprise uh, in my voice is quite real um it's not unusual for me to uh, get upset when i'm reading a book because that's the way the book the book is meant to do that you know you you feel for the character if a, if a character gets hurt then i feel that as i'm reading the book so i've gone from doing huge amounts of prep um for for audiobooks to reading them dry which is now what i do um if i start working with a new author then yes i will go through make notes and um sort of cross-reference uh, various parts of the story in advance. But as, certainly with somebody like Wes, where I've done a lot of books for him, um, the book, book literally sit down the day the script arrives and start narrating. Um, sometimes I have to go back and change things because I realise that a character that I've been maybe given a certain accent or a, a certain standing in society in the voice they might sound posh or they might sound very rough turns out that they're the opposite when as the book develops yes that's a pitfall that can happen if you don't pre-read the entire book but for me it gives more authenticity in the read for if if somebody suddenly dies or gets hurt or there's a surprise or they're happy that emotion comes through in my voice and i i like that um and i think the readers like it as well so that's my prep and i very early starts i start i start working at half six in the morning and by about three o'clock in the afternoon i'm done so <laughs> so, so it's good i just noticed you've got a few comments me. Um, not not necessarily just about Audible, but just there uh, from several um, bloggers that I know particularly well. They've been very supportive 
I think Madonna's just popped up there. Very supportive since the since the word go. Uh, it's just a big hello to them, Donna and Sharon, who are who are trying to wind me up at the moment by saying that my is <laughs> far too devious and that you shouldn't be going into my head. Um, I would probably agree with them with that, <laughs> but someone has to do it, Aubrey. So congratulations. <laughs> um, and then these these. Um, wonderful bloggers as well have read the new york book as well so they they know that you've got a a, a treat in store for you there um, <laughs> once, you finish, um once you finish the latest book there Has yeah been, well you know that'll that ne I've, I've finished that next week so um yeah so straight to the other one we've got quite a contrast i think between the two uh, is anything is this the question now the next one yeah 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 so oh, has anything ever have anything ever surprised you about a narrator's take on a particular book or character? Just before we get to that one, we've just we've just had a question from um ah, uh, Donna, yeah. Donna. What's the accent okay. or voice you dread seeing on the page? Um the only accent that really throws me is the Norfolk accent. I'm pretty good with most other accents. Norfolk is just slightly odd. Um, it's kind of West Country mixed with estuary English. It's a real hard one to do. And the, the equivalent American accent would be Boston. Boston accent, just really odd. Even Americans think Boston is odd. I find um, the, 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 the Norfolk accent, really hard to do um so that's the only one that it's it's come up a few times and it's where i sort of go oh, this is gonna be hard and I've, I've never really nailed it so can we avoid east so avoid east anglia norfolk please wes in anything that you'd i think we've got a few a few people agreeing here as well we've got tony who's agreeing um he spent many years there in Norfolk and he found it definitely <laughs> odd. Um, anyway, so back to that question then. How has anything ever surprised yeah. you about narrators? Oh, have we missed one? Or is that the same one? All right, is that the same no, one? No, has no, no, that's like, the one. Um, yeah, yeah. Has anything ever surprised me? Um, no, I don't I, I, I don't think so. I can't think off, off the top of my head i think the first time that i heard the, the the york books narrated because i'd said because i'm not from wiltshire myself i'm from um up north uh, from uh, manchester originally actually um the, the first time i heard the york books you know and they're based around salisbury and i was living in salisbury when i be, you know started to write them and i heard those wiltshire accents it, it did it did jar me a little bit because in my head of course as i've been writing them i've not been hearing the the, the, the wiltshire accent so mm. it, i think it surprised me I, th I think i didn't expect to hear wiltshire accents almost even though it was in wiltshire so it, but then of course obviously they need to be because it's it's in wiltshire um yeah yeah that was the only time i think i was, I was i've ever been sort of oh quite expect that um but in terms of the actual you know as i said before you know you uh you nail you know you nail the characters and you 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 nail the plots and they are vastly and, and they are very different although they've got sort of crossover characters they are very different thematically and they are very different um in in terms of what they're they're portraying but i think you you switch between them um very effectively so yeah that answers your question yeah they were, they, they were they were they were good fun I, oh. I like doing those accents. <laughs> Donna says she's going to write a book in, in Norfolk now and ask you to narrate it. Now, I've actually uh, read Donna's first book um, and it's really good, but it's not based in Norfolk. So if you narrate that one, you oh, find... No, I'd be happy to do that, Donna, as long as it's not in Norfolk. But the, so. but the one now she's going to set in Norfolk for you. Okay. It's like, it's like the you know, the, the, the Stephen Fry thing when, when he was doing Harry Potter. And there was a there was a line where um, uh, J.K. Rowling had written. He pocketed it, and um, he really struggled with that line. So he said to her, 
the next book that you write, can you please not include that line in it? So she has purposely included that line in every subsequent book that she wrote just to annoy Stephen Fry. So um, I hope you're not going to be like that. Is there a line that annoys you that I've got in any of my books yet? Character name? No, Uh, no, no, I wouldn't tell you even if there was. (laughs) 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 So you couldn't do it again. (laughs) Yeah, no. Um, I'm in Dunstable, Luton, so we don't really have an accent. Okay, apparently. Um, um, so next question when narrating the book do you experience it as a reader or are you focused on the narration well i i I refer to my my previous answer your honor um now i the majority of the books that i work on i experience them as a reader um so as i said if something happens to a character and it's upsetting yeah i i have found i've literally found myself bursting into tears reading a book because you become as you know as a reader or a listener you become incredibly involved with the text that you're reading and that's mm. the whole idea of books and audio books it's the suspension of of belief it's taking yourself out of your normal world and everything that's going on around you and all the crap that we have to endure on a day-by-day basis into a fantasy realm which becomes incredibly real so i i love that about being you know yes i experience the books just as any other reader will um and i and i think that that as a result gives a better a better read for me i can't say much more than that no i think i think that was really 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 well answered aubrey i think yeah i think you've got a real passion for audio books and just in mm. mm. a passion for for writing and and um and you, you you know you can hear it in your voice not just when you're narrating but, but when you're talking about it too um so it's fantastic and, and of course audiobooks you know I, I know for a fact you know that there's a lot of people who who, who audiobooks are everything for them you know and mm. they, 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 oh they, yeah yeah you know and when yeah. you when you're an audio listener more than a reader you know you you, you can be just as ferocious if not more ferocious than a than a kindle reader and uh, and i know oh, absolutely yeah 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 there's yeah. there's a there's a guy um uh, there's a guy called john hincliffe i don't know if john will ever get to see this but john is a, a reader of yours and uh well a, a listener shall i say john has a very bad eyesight so you know there's a there's a um there's a I mean, audiobooks originally kind of originated for people with bad eyesight and and, and uh, people that were were blind, uh, and and John is uh, has has really bad vision, so listens. He he will listen to an audiobook in a day. So when your books come out, he downloads them and listens to it, and and on the day of release, he will message me at the end of the day and go, on, "Just finished the book. It's great. Thanks very much." You know. It's, uh, um, so yes, yeah, so for for a lot of people there. They're a brilliant way of being able to um, experience uh, work that otherwise they may not be able to. So, hmm. I think what's really great as well about series, writing a series and and or different series is and linking them together and, and and the same with yourself narrating the same series is and linking them together is that you, <clears> you know you get that same group of readers that that, that stay with you. Um, and you almost feel like you you owe it to them to deliver the best you can possibly deliver every single time, uh, and just think it just pushes you that 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 extra bit harder. Um, I know yeah, that when I yeah. released this New York book after two and a half years out from from York, I was very um, nervous, um, more more nervous maybe than I've been with any other book, just because I thought I've had two and a half years out. I'm, am I going to get this right? Am I in the zone? Kind of thing and. Um, it took it very seriously. I don't know, Donna herself here actually read some earlier parts of it and kind of so, sort of to boost my you know waning confidence on it. So, and I'm glad I finished it now because I think it's it's a particularly good book. Um, but I but yeah, and I, and I hear what you're saying because you want to do the best you can. And I think when you get invested in a, in a particular character in a particular series, like the reader does as a writer, you you're determined mm. to deliver it as best you can as well. Um, yeah, yeah, 
Yep. So Don is just saying I can read a book in a few hours, but an audio book takes me ages randomly. I do find I, I would agree with Donna on that one. That for me, I'm similar to Donna. I, I'm really fast. I'm a really fast reader. Um, so, you know, and, and I'll pick up a Kindle book. And so, I, you know, I might have three or four hours. I could I could pick up, a, you know, a Kindle book and, and, and read it. Um, whereas it would probably take you maybe twice as long with the with the audio. That said, um, mm. I can't read when I'm driving and and, and I can't read um, in certain situations. So I still use audio books uh, like Donna. I'm, I'm particularly fast, but not everyone's a fast reader. And I mean, I know people who are very, very slow readers and will read slower than they listen to an audio book. So again, that's mm. going to be their thinking in that. Because a lot of people will will actually speed up audiobooks mm. to listen to them faster because they can't you, wait to get to the end. You know, they, they play they it back. At, them. At they used to bridge them quite a lot, didn't they? In, in the, in the yeah. When, yeah, they did. You know, before before maybe technology, um, we you used to go and buy them in like, you know, uh, petrol stations on the way. You know, you'd travel somewhere and mm. you'd look on the shelf and there'd be a petrol station. You'd stop and you know all um Val mcdermott's books well they were on cassette they? so you, they were limited to either but they'd all been clipped to about three hours and i remember listening to to one or two of them and thinking you know there's, there's something missing here you know we shouldn't be <laughs> moving so so quickly through this element a book but this because they've cut it down from about six hours haven't they seven hours or whatever yeah yeah so that's yeah. interesting but we don't do that anymore do we i don't think so much no 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 yeah no. So how are we doing for questions? Oh, has hearing okay. the audio book? Yeah. Changes. Has hearing the audio book ever changed your perception of a character or how you think about the plot? Ooh, interesting one. <laughs> Maybe not so much. I think it I think it's nice to 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 look at it from the audience perspective and and, and see how they might be feeling, but but I think you capture it pretty well and you know, if I if one thing I was I was talking to Donna or someone else recently about this. Like when I when I set out to to make a story, any story, um, I need I need some I need to do a plan. Okay, not a, not a, not necessarily like a you know a, a you know rigid plan. But what I want to do is I want to make almost a puzzle, and and I want to weave together storylines that to to anybody else would seem almost unweavable and 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 kind of weave them together so like in the new one for example um i suppose it's about the crying cave killings because because it's bulbwood so i've got um several plot lines in that that you would think you know how are these going to go together and you know i don't i haven't really practiced this but so i don't want to say anything because I, I spoil the story but there are like several plot lines that you would think how do they weave together and um, so I'd like to make sure that that I start off by doing that. That that that's my starting point. I want a puzzle. So I want a puzzle that that I solve first, and then and then the the reader will then will then solve. Although the reader usually can never solve it till the end, which is always nice. Um, and that's what I try to do. So I still see that happening when 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 you read the books. Um, so I, I'm quite happy with the quite happy with that that's very interesting actually what Donish just said actually this is a really interesting point and I, I've started to do this less and I think a lot of writers are starting to do this less now and they're taking a lot of the saids out she said he said and and that because you're you're acting it aren't you and I think ultimately what happens is the said becomes quite jarring because you're like well I know he's saying it it's almost like showing, not telling. It's because you're saying it in an accent. Yeah. You don't have to almost say he said it. No, that's right. Um, yeah, it, 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 that that, that's an interesting point. That is something that I will self-edit sometimes with authors. Mm. Um, if a book's been written before they thought about publishing it as an audio book, I'll, I'll discuss with the author and say, I'm going to remove some of the he said she said because they don't need to be there it's obvious who's talking at the time um and what i found is is more and more authors now are thinking in the way of the book has to be listened to as well as read 
Yeah, um, I do. So that's happening with the editing as there's well. There's a lot less of that going on now. Yeah. yeah so. um, because ultimately, you know, it's been said by the fact that it's in the quotation marks in the book, and uh, likewise, you know, it's mm. been said. So uh, you, Don's got a good point there. And also, I, I tend to when I first started writing, I tend to use the first name of the person that so if i'm talking to somebody i'd be using the first name so Aubrey to tell me and what you'll find is actually if you if you listen to real conversation people don't say each other's first names in conversation they just don't do it no that's right um, yeah so a lot of authors and i've been guilty of this but a lot of authors will, will, will repeatedly use first names in in conversations mm. so you know like oh, hi, hi donna do you have a good what did you do then donna do you know you, you don't you don't keep using the name so so I do find now that when I'm editing my work, I do take those out quite a lot. Whereas mm. I wasn't mm. doing that at the beginning. Um, so I should probably go back and edit some stuff, but then I don't know until the complaints there, mm. I might not. Um, <laughs> so it is worth, it is worth thinking about that. I think we took totally off, uh, went totally off tangent then, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. We had a curveball thrown there. Yeah. We done a, okay. Ten. <laughs> so finally can can we can we tell you about an audio book that we've listened to that we would recommend well i was saying earlier on about the book that i was listening to as i was coming over to france today um it was the first proper what i would consider audio book that i ever bought um it was on cassette and it came in a a, a pack of i think it was about 14 cassettes in a big box um, and it is uh, the BBC's production of Lord of the Rings so I'm kind of slightly cheating here because it's um, an audio production as opposed to an audio book so as we were saying uh, about mm -hmm. audio books used to be abridged this is an abridged version but it is performed um, so there's there's a bit of music and sound effects but it's mainly just different characters talking and that was the book that got me in, or that was the audio that got me into audio books um, because it's it's quite old now, the production. It's probably 25 years old, maybe, maybe 30, maybe more, actually. Maybe it was about the 80s it was put together. So a bit like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, this mm -hmm. was the Rings trilogy. Um, and I've been listening listening to it on the way over and it hasn't lost its edge. Amazing production with some huge actors of the time. Um, and that, that would be mine. Um, obviously, there are lots of authors that I work with that I could recommend. But that was the book that got me into audiobooks. The, the audio book that got me into audiobooks. Um, so for me, that's the big one. What about you, Wes? Well, I think for me, it's um, I tend, I have listen to a lot of non-fiction on audio more so than fiction for similar thing to maybe donna said that, that i i think i read fiction at a different speed i do read fiction at a faster speed than i than i read um, non-fiction non-fiction you know you have to slow down a little bit sometimes so mm. non-fiction suits my pace a little bit more but i listen to a lot of that john ronson stuff um the psychopath test and a few other things that that he's written you know and that they're really interesting i really enjoyed them um you know when he goes over and kind of uh talks to people and investigates people it's a bit like a bit like a louis through kind of character you know he goes and exposes the the the, the peculiarities in society and and uh and talks about it so i really really enjoyed that um a few podcasts i've really enjoyed um I, I can't even remember what it was recently it was uh it was the history of the uh genghis khan and it was but it but it was huh? dramatic it was a dramatic retelling so the idea was it was supposed to make it exciting as he told you the history i can't remember what it was it was it called it might have been it's not horrible histories because that's the one for children but it but it, it, it mm. it's 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 quite high in the in the podcast podcast charts and it's well it was a few years back um and it was oh it was hours and hours and hours about the khan family and you know and but when they were actually doing the attacks and the the the, the, the armies and whatnot they're describing it really figuratively like as a, as a writer would describe it to try and make people like me who um 
like it all melodramatic and exciting, jazzed up, as it were. Paint, so, painting pictures with words. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, basically. So it gives that edge to it, that other than just like reading from a textbook and then they assembled here and then moved on to the city, I actually get a bit of description mm. of, the, of the actual fighting and conflicts and stuff. Um, so, yeah, no, I really enjoyed that. And again, you know, it's just really good time to, to pass the journeys when I'm not plotting. If I'm plotting, you know, I'll just sit in silence or have a bit of music on. But if I'm not plotting, say I'm near the end of writing the book, then then I'll probably listen to to some nonfiction usually. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. um, reading wise, I read, read a lot of crime, but I also read other genres as well. But I try to stick in crime predominantly because obviously that's my my like work as well so i need to try and make sure yeah, that i keep yeah. myself interested in that in that um topic <laughs> a happy topic um so there yeah that's me so yeah brilliant I think probably well, go for his recommendation though i imagine being the the king of audio that he is i would Definitely. Well, yeah, that and a good zombie. No, I'm I'm, I love a good zombie. I love a good post-apocalyptic, you know, Thriller. just dross. I love that stuff. Easy, just I, total yeah. escapism. Does, <laughs> Walk, does Walking Dead, the original Walking Dead was lovely. There's, you know. there's lots of um, published fiction, you know, um, people doing that online at the moment, isn't there? So, um mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. Have you narrated any? Or yeah, I've done loads. I've done loads of zombie stuff. Yeah, like for yeah. for writers. Yes. Yeah. 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 I've done. I've done. I've done quite a few. I'm. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to mention any of them now, Wes, because this is all about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> but yes, no. I've done. I've done quite a, I, I love them. I love the gore. I love the. You know, no, well, I, yeah. Loving the guts. It's it's. <laughs> it's well, just good fun to do. So, You've got some of that coming in the in the next one, Aubrey. When it, when I, <laughs> well, when I yeah, I mean, you know, some of the York it. stuff was pretty close. Yeah, this one's not as this one's different. This is based around the region, uh, and my local area, so I'm not offending anyone. Yeah. Where I live. <laughs> well, which, then, which is also gonna... lovely because it, the, 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 I, I love the descriptions of the area, and of course, you know the the um, uh, the crying cave killings that i'm doing at the moment the um just the descriptions of the locations i'm trying not to give anything away here so yeah oh, well, but, that's um, it. I, but i, I can I, mention I, now I, actually I, that that's... I was going to mention that tomorrow night actually um so friday night friday the 23rd at half six at waterstones in harrogate um i'm actually doing um sit down with another author called Leslie McAvoy who also writes um northern uh well Yorkshire crime fiction as well so if anybody's yeah. local to Harrogate or in the area and they want to come along and ask us a few questions and um pick up some signed books where we'll we'll be available from half six I, I would then, be there but it's a little bit far oh, from today. I've, I've left it late yeah. it's time for but I think you're going to come <laughs> to the one in there's with itself for the fever yeah. festival in august yeah yeah i'll be up in august yeah, yeah and i imagine that will be very busy because the fever festival really does liven nesbro up and it's an evening slot friday evening in the library as well so i think that you'll be um i think you'll have to get our voice ready <laughs> mm, i can do that yeah we'll, but, we'll wet it up with a glass of water first and... okay so I think that probably does that wrap us wrap us up because I think we were told forty five minutes and I've just looked at the time and this is forty four minutes so I'm wondering if we're we there already. Well, that means I can before we relight my barbecue and uh, crack on with it, having some some, some nice food. Down, get the kids ready for bed. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not. This is my evening start. <laughs> Um, it's been great talking to you, Wes. Um, it's it's yeah. it, it's always a pleasure. No um, I, yeah. I spend oh. many, 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 many hours by myself, as you do, working on yeah. your work. So um, to be able to Thank have a you. quick discussion like this, um, it's been lovely. Well, so uh, I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, and 
and long, long may we continue producing books for those that like it. Well, here, here's, it. here's to the next 17. <laughs> yeah. I look a bit older by then, but never mind. And yeah, they're coming. They're there. Don't worry, they're there. You just got to. I hope so. <laughs> I got to pay for these trips to France somehow. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm saving up uh, for when I've got the time to go, go to France. No, we're going in summer, but we'll be camping, you see, and the children. That's so the way. They, they, they want to get out in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the wild where they really <laughs> do belong. <laughs> so yeah, well, <laughs> well enjoy. And um, yep. I, I'll we'll, do Wes in August. And um, the, 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 yeah. the rest of you, lovely listener, um, um, I'll catch you on the next book. Yeah, hopefully we'll see people here in um, August or potentially tomorrow in Harrogate if anybody's about. Other than that, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for listening. Um, awesome. Cheers. Santé. Au revoir oh, from me. Cheers. Mm -hmm. water.